Hey guys, welcome to part 6 of Let's Play Spider-Man Weather Shadows Amazing Allies Edition for the PS2. In the last part, we we went through the streets of New York and saw that things weren't too great, and then Luke Cage had a bit of a difficulty. And now we actually have finally tracked down the Tinkerer's, Tinkerer's lab. I don't know where this is supposed to be. Uh, we were like in the middle of New York, in the middle of Manhattan. I'm assuming Manhattan. Because Spider-Man is like the protector of Manhattan. I think that's how that works. I, I, I like I never really like read comic books that much, so I don't know how it works. But I think it's like what every character gets a part of the city, <laughs> like the Fantastic Four. They're around. Iron Man is in like Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I don't read comic books, so I don't know. But yeah, so we're actually at the lab, so now we've got to actually track him down. Because before we got the power core, but I guess Spider-Man isn't done with defeating him. Because we got the part we need, as far as I can understand, but we're still going to find him. Uh, so for most of this level, because this is quite a long level, this whole part, you can see, over 20 minutes, and this is just one level. So this is the longest level that we've got so far, but unfortunately not for the right reasons. So we're going to be talking to the Tinkerer the whole time, and uh, the first thing we've got to do is shut off this conveyor belt. But as you like, as you can see there, it, it, the conveyor belt is pushing us back, but you can just jump along it. Like the whole thing is the Tinkerer is like, ha ha, the conveyor belt, it's so fast, you'll never be able to get a run along it but if you just jump along it you can get there fine so what they've done is that as well as having a conveyor belt blocking your way there is a physical wall because otherwise in video game terms you could just walk along it and be completely fine right so let's start with the positives you know me I'm a positive guy sometimes and with this level oh and by the way you can get an early checkpoint by going all the way up along this pipe, it, it, it's weird. Uh, so the positives, I really like the look of this level. Uh, even though it's meant to be like a secret lab, it is more like kind of like a warehouse sort of deal. I don't even know if it is meant to be a secret lab, I'm not sure, but uh, I do like the look of it. The blues and everything. Uh, I said in the last part about how this game is more, doesn't quite go for that cartoonish style that you're, most people are useful, used to when it comes to comic books, and I, I think this level looks pretty nice. So, it's blue, so that's cool. Okay, so that's all the positives out the way. This level is dull. It's really, really dull. Uh, so the last level, I had a great time. That was a blast. Can I just replay the last level again? But this level doesn't have any pigeons, or anything fun like that. There's no crab sign. It's just, it, it's this. What you're looking at on screen, that's pretty much it. Because so much of this level is, okay, so what we got to do at the moment is that we're trying to stop the conveyor belt. So you find this scientist here and we gotta now find his radio so he will unlock a door so we can go through the door so we can get the conveyor belt shut down so we can go through. It's not actually that complicated, it's just dull. What it really ultimately comes down to is fighting random guys or whatever. So, there's just so much fighting. So this beginning bit, so you, after you talk to that guy, and you have to talk to that guy, you come up here and this is where the radio is. But it's through that thing on the right there, but that thing only disappears once you defeat all these guys. But it almost seems like these guys are just like infinitely spawning. Like, that's something this game hasn't done to this up to this point. Usually it's like, here's the guys, defeat the guys, you move on. But with this one, as you can see, like, look, there's just some guy who just ran onto the scene. We were fighting a load of guys, and this guy's like, hey, me too, hey, like, just joining in on the fun. So, like, a big thing about this game is that you got to defeat all the enemies to progress, but it's really inconsistent and just sometimes not clear like we're trying to find a radio like look at this guy just running on away don't forget about me you gotta fight me too if you weren't sick of the combat already one more for you but yeah so it's so far it's been like okay you can't get past so you got to keep going or you got to defeat all the enemies and you can keep going but this one you got to go all the way up to the top 
Then you've got to go all the way to the right, and then you'll see that there's kind of something there. It's not clear, but th there might be something there. So you defeat the enemies, and then it turns out there is something there behind a wall. And the wall turns invisible, and then you can get the radio that way. But that is not clear. Like, that is not clear at all. When some guy in a game is all like, hey, go find the radio, you would expect to be like, let's, okay, I'll search for it, I guess. And then when you start fighting enemies and more enemies just show up, you would be like, okay, well then it's not up here. But then, like, the other confusing thing is that once you get the radio, you then have to fight these guys before you can even get down. Like, you, I'm stuck on this top level until you defeat all the enemies. Like, I just jumped down that gap. I could not do that if I did not defeat all the enemies. For, like, no reason. It's extremely arbitrary. It's just like... Okay, so you got the radio, so now here's some more enemies, and we're just going to block your path. It's like, it's not, there's no logic to it. There's no logic to it. It's just like, we're just going to throw these enemies at you, and you have to do it. And I don't, it, it's just, this whole level is very confusing. I mean, it all kind of looks the same. I mean, it looks nice, but you're fighting the same enemy over and over and over, and it's definitely, oh, this is embarrassing. These uh, enemies or flying robots are back from the previous level and in case you don't remember what they do is fly up to you and then they will just attack you at a certain rate. They'll be like here I am and if you they only take one punch to you know be destroyed but I was killed there. But after defeating so many enemies it, it's a bit oof. But, like, that's the thing, with that robot there, when you're attached to a wall, you can't attack. And when you're in the air, you can't really attack. So whenever you see one of those robots, and we're going to see several of them in this level. So whenever you see one, you've got to just jump to the floor and then punch. And even then, it, it doesn't feel like your punch is actually going to hit them because they float at such a weird angle that they float just above your head. But you do hit them, but it feels like you're not going to, so you want to jump and punch it. I mean, I said this was going to happen. I said this was going to happen in the last part when I was having a blast. I said, hey, the rest of the game is definitely going to annoy me. And uh, this level was it. Although this level did something that the other levels didn't do, this level was drawn out and dull. So pretty much what we've already done, we're just going to keep doing that some more. And this level, just, just look at this, I know where I'm going, and it's really quite, it's just weird. It's just really confusing, it's, there's no guidance to it, you just kind of have to sip around, but then there's no sense of exploration with this game, so... I feel like I've already made a lot of these points already, but this is the worst so far. And then we get this, out of nowhere... You're trying to get the Tinkerer, you're playing your Spider-Man game, you're having a good time. And then you run into this random guy, or woman, who breaks down her life story. And she explains why she's working for the Tinkerer, and is why she's into crime, and is doing this. Because she got fired, and then she couldn't be on unemployment anymore, her parents kicked her out. So her only choice was to turn to crime. And I don't know, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's interesting that they kind of point this out. Of course, like a lot of films and media has done the whole why people turn to crime. A uh, big example is Breaking Bad. That whole TV show is about how here's a good guy, becomes a bad guy through crime. And then we... Ha like, that's interesting. But having it in this game... Having somebody actually break it down. And as you just saw there, that wasn't a quick, oh, I had to do it. She broke it all down. She was like, I was a software engineer. Then I was let go. Like, she broke it all down. Like, the whole story. And Spider-Man didn't really have that much to say. Like, Spider-Man wasn't like, oh, you shouldn't have done this or whatever. Or actually had a, like, well, he says you shouldn't have become a criminal. But he doesn't have a really good argument against it. And after that happened, or after the woman says that, I was kind of like, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then I was like snapped out of that moment. Because it's Spider-Man Web of Shadows Amazing Allies Edition for the PS2! It's just like a 2D side scroll about Spider-Man. Like I said, there's stuff like Breaking Bad and a tons of media about the whole criminal things. And it can crime be justified. But I don't want to have that fought in this game 
like I said, there was clearly a lot of effort put into the writing. There was clearly so much. Someone really tried here, but when you're just seeing it in text boxes in the middle of a game like this, it's like, why? That makes no sense. It's very odd. But then again, I kind of like it. I can't have to respect it. And then go from one weird conversation into another weird conversation, not from an ethical standpoint, but we you just find a robot who's like, can you help us out? There's some people I want to kill. Can you help us out? And if you say yes, not much really happens. It's really odd. He just walks into this and disappears and takes some help with him. It's kind of a little odd. Or oh, I think what that was, that wasn't health, that was a power-up. So right there, that was a choice. You can either choose to be like, hey, I'll help you out, robot friend. Or you can choose to be like, hey, I'm going to kill you. You get the XP. Then I think that was a green power-up. I, I may have already mentioned the power-ups, but there are green and golden Spider-Man symbols, and those are power-ups. Could not tell you what they do. There's n it's never explained, I don't believe. Hold on, I've got the manual somewhere. And don't worry, I'll look this up. Let's, let's have a look, because it's never said I, I don't notice anything from collecting them. In this level, you're kind of forced to collect quite a few of them. Okay, here we go, power-ups. Some parrots will help but uh, that's not, that's not what I, okay it doesn't say, let's just throw that away. The manual doesn't say, but if you pause the game it says you have like this many green Spider-Man like icons and this many golden ones. So obviously they're a collectible, but I don't know what they do. So to get that collectible you have to actually just say no I'm not going to help you out robot and then destroy him because if you don't then he just goes in there and whatever. But, ah, oh, more combat. Just more combat. You can really see how repetitive it is when you're breaking it down like this. Like, I use amazing strength. Okay, there we go. That's what I can talk about. The power-ups. I know I said I couldn't. But in the top right, you have all the summons, which I've already mentioned. But, um, so in the 360 and PS3 versions of this game, of Web of Shadows, you had summons where you could summon a character to fight alongside you. That could be Black Cat, Wolverine, or whatever. Uh, in the DS version, you had the summons, but it was you were summoning people, but they were they each had their own thing. So I believe I can't remember. I think Green Goblin was like a splash screen. Or kill, splash screen, screen nuke, whatever you want to call it. But then there was one for health, I remember, because I think I used the health one quite a lot. Uh, so that sort of thing. This one is actually the most robust version of that. You get a ton of different power-ups, and you can have five at a time. So in between levels, you've already seen me do it. You can assign different power-ups, and then you can use them at any time. At this point in time, I've only really used the summons because what they do is that you can summon a character, they'll come on screen, they'll do a ton of damage, and in terms of fighting a boss, that's really useful because it can be quite awkward uh, hitting bosses. But uh, just then I used Amazing Strength because you get quite a lot of power-ups. And as you can see, I have Summon Wolverine, which is awesome. I got that in the last part. But the weird thing is that I don't think there's any real logic to the power-ups in terms of what you get like there's a uh, quite a few you can get a healing one that was straight up healing you can get an amazing strength one which I use there's quite a lot I would say there's about 40 different ones I want to say 30 to 40 different ones so there's quite a lot to mess around with but the only good ones I found really are the healing ones and the one that summons like a, a hero on screen although sadly unlike the other games they don't actually or unlike the 360 and PS3 versions, they don't come on screen and stay on screen, they just come in, do some damage, and then leave. So, even though we have Summon Wolverine, and we will use that at some point, we will, we have to, it's Summon Wolverine, you know? Um, we have to get Wolverine up in here, but, <laughs> up in here, I don't know why I said that. It's late, I'm tired. Um, but yeah, so, we will use them, but, I don't know. The, like the summons are pretty cool. I like how much effort they clearly put into them to make them different, but it's not really a substitute for good combat. Like if it was good combat and then you had the summons, I'd be like all for it. I'd be like, hey, awesome, that's cool. That's a cool way. And also the button doesn't really work because you have to hold L1 
which uses your spider sense. And that's something, I don't know if I can really recommend using it, but your spider sense by pressing L1 actually points you where you have to go. But I never use it because I never really think to use it. And he just kind of, his head just kind of glows in a general direction. So it's actually not that useful, I find. But you got to press L1 and then you scroll to select it. And then you press circle, but a lot of times it just won't work. And I, I found that I was just tapping circle and I just couldn't get it done. So that it can be quite inconsistent with whether it actually works. Or the summons at the very least. Uh, so yeah, so we got another section where we're just beating up the guys. But for some reason, there's like a hole there. There's a hole right in the middle where you have to fight. So where the door, the door that I just went through was blocked off until you beat all those enemies. But you beat them up in an arena where there's like a hole down to a bottom bit. For no reason. I mean, I can't really explain why it's weird. Because you kind of just have to play it. I've got a present for you. Oh goody, is this some kind of machine that'll try to kill me? Yes, it is. I suppose. There's there's dialogue in this level. I've kind of talked over most of it, but that's just because it, it it's just like, it's kind of nothing-y dialogue. Dialogue? I hate dialogue. God, it's just, it's gross. It's really gross. So yeah, so this is like a robot that you got to fight. Again, like, that decision we made with the robot before, I really wish there was some, like, weight or, like, some sort of clear effect to all the decisions you make. And uh, when I was speaking in the last part, by the way, just to clarify, because I didn't actually explain myself, the big choice that you had to make with that switch involving the train... I hope that thing came with the extended service plan. That's the last time I outsource. Fool! Okay, that was the tinkerer talking, by the way, in case you were wondering. Uh, yeah, but in the last part with that switch, uh, it was about the symbiotes, but I never actually said that. If you flip that switch, the symbiotes would go to Luke Cage and you wouldn't have to fight them, but if you didn't, then the symbiotes would stay and not follow the train because the train didn't move, and that's how that went. But with this one, the choice was with the robot and didn't do anything, really. I, I mean, I guess there was a potential power up but I don't really know this level was like so it's spidering time. that's not a no one says it's spidering time what does that even mean and, oh, and another weird conversation we got another one right so we're now actually at the office of apparently Mr. Mason I guess that's the tinkerer's name I didn't know this so I apologize but uh there's two ways of doing this the easy way is just you bribe her and then you move on, which of course doesn't matter because you don't have money. But then the good way of doing it is that you convince her that she's not being appreciated enough and then move on. Again, as I've said multiple times, funny idea, cool idea, it's just text boxes and there's actually no real consequence to any of it. I think that's one of the major problems I have with the choices in this game, there's actually no real consequence to any of them. It's just a different way of doing something and you just see a different dialogue box and that's about it. Sure, you can stick a little number up that says f 5 in red or 10 in black. Hey. This goo looks like the same stuff that's taking over the city. Guess Cage was right. So here's something interesting and something that deviates from the other games is that Venom's gone at this point in time. But Spider-Man comes to the to the conclusion because this symbiote is just saying Parker at him and he comes to the conclusion that all these symbiotes actually have Parker, Venom's Parker. consciousness in them but they're all spread out to like all the different symbiotes like Eddie Brock's consciousness has been spread out to the whole symbiote virus and all the different ones which I think that's a pretty cool idea I think that's pretty nice Right, so boss time. Uh, this is quite an easy one. I mean, not that easy. It can be a little annoying because I've said this every boss fight, but they follow a pattern. And this one, because the Luke Cage one was a one on one fight, this one is a uh, you wait till the right moment or whatever. Like, because the Tinker is in this big robot. So when he's using 
this big shield, you can't attack him. When the shield is down, you can. Sadly for anyone playing, it's not quite that simple. Because right at the beginning, as you can see, I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. But it's... When his shield is down, it's not always recommended to attack him. Because he can still bring up like another shield. And then he can like just attack you. You're going to see it. So sometimes when you jump into him without his shield, he just will still have the shield. It's weird. It's really weird. It <laughs> like This boss fight isn't too bad. But okay, so there we go. Okay. So he just hit me off there. And then we get this. So there is some health to the top left and the top right. But the lasers that we've been seeing throughout the level, which I haven't mentioned... Because all the levels that we've seen already, that you can just go past and it doesn't even matter. But with um, with this, you kind of got to be careful when you try and grab the health. But like, yeah, he's got his shield down, but I just can't attack him. So let's talk some tactics, okay? So what you got to do, you got to try and stay relatively close to him. But when he shoots his bullets, that's when his shield goes down, like that. So his shield just went down. So the big thing you got to try and do is make sure you don't get hit because if you get hit then you're not going to be able to get close to him and if you don't get close to him quick enough then he just does his charge attack and if you hit him when he does that then you get knocked back and hurt. So this fight it, it's pretty simple but one problem is that when you're trying to avoid the bullets you can't just jump. Like if you just jump then you won't, you'll hit the ground and get hurt. But you can't web upwards, e like you have to web upwards but you won't actually attach to the wall. It's kind of strange. I don't know if there's actually anything in this boss fight that stops you or any attacks that he has that would stop you from just attaching to the wall. I mean there's not that much of a wall. There's no ceiling or proper ceiling so there's that but I don't know. This one's just kind of a weird one, where you just gotta, it's not too hard, but you gotta get a little lucky. Like here, I managed to get close, managed to do a lot of damage, and actually managed to finish him off like this, but... Like, I apologise for not giving more stricter strategies, but... I'm not going to win this fight, am I? Uh, no you are not. But yeah, I couldn't give any better strategies, because it's just a weird one. much to do to stand around chatting. Alright. Bye. That's him. Okay, so yeah, so that was that boss fight. You can just use summons and power-ups to make that easier, but you can do it just easy enough. Look, I told you, the on the yeah, you can do it easy enough by just attacking him and just, just try and stay close to him and when his shield goes down, punch him. But anyway, apparently there's like a missile that we uh, got to stop. So we get Nick Fleury tells us, oh, by the way, there's a missile, and then... Uh, Kingpin calls us, but the the reason that why Kingpin calls us is to pretty much set up the next level. So, the next level is going to be on a heli carrier to investigate Shield, and that's what that phone call was about to have that make a little bit more sense. I don't know why this missile had to be in here. This seems like just weird. There's no reason why there would be a missile here, or why the Tinkerer would want to infect the city with the symbiote. This makes no sense. It makes no sense why the Tinkerer would be doing this. And in the 360 version, he actually helps out. Like, begrudgingly, but he does help out to stop the symbiotes. So it makes no sense why you would try and infect it more. It's weird. But anyway, there's two ways of doing this. Again, completely pointless. Uh, you can either use logic to stop the computer, or you can just disconnect it. And then Storm will come to your aid. That's a little out of nowhere. I think if you do like the good thing in that thing, like in that situation, Storm becomes a summon for you. But if you don't, then maybe you get like a bad X-Men. But that's so weird. Like you stop a missile and then boom, Storm will now come to your aid. And that is set when that will happen. Just just weird. Just out, like completely out of nowhere. But anyway, next time in Let's Play Spider-Man Web of Shadows Amazing Allies Edition, we will go and investigate S.H.I.E.L.D. So I've been Honest on 23. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.